Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to use the web service task in SSIS. So the first thing I would do is create a new project. And in this project we're going to get the holiday names and dates for all the holidays in the US throughout the year. So I'm going to call this project holidays. Now once I've created the package, I'm going to just go ahead and create some blank files real quick before I even move on. So in my project folder, I'm going to create a WSDL file called holidays. And this is going to hold the information that I pull from the website. Um, and it's required for that. It'll download it. You'll, I'll, you'll see in a second. And then I'm going to create another one called holidays temp. And I'm just creating text files and then changing the extensions at the end because they're just blank files. And then a new text document again. And this one's going to be holidays. .xml. Okay. So we've got that set up. And now let's go ahead and go into our SSIS. So from here, we're going to grab the web service task, drop it in here. Now, if you want to create a connection manager, you can do that. I always like to create them first. Um, but even if you don't create them first, when you go into the task, it'll ask you, you know, what kind of connection do you want? And you want a website connection. So when you click new connection, it'll automatically cre <coughs> sorry, create one down here for you. So the website we're going to use is this website. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here's the website and here's all the stuff that you could get from there. So we're going to be using this one and here's a bunch of code for it. But when you put it in SSIS, we actually need it to go into WSDL form like this. So you just add WSDL at the end of the, the web address. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. Go ahead and test it. It's good. Now, now it's going to ask for the WSDL file where you want to download your information to. And we created one. So there it is. Overwrite, I'm going to go ahead and do sure. Let's name this get holidays from web. Oh, sorry, just kept going too fast. So once you do this, and I'm glad that error popped up. If you click that, you'll get an error. You have to click download WSDL, and it'll tell you that it's downloaded successfully. Now you can go to input, because without the information from the website, this part won't work. So the service I'm going to use is Holiday Service 2, or it should show one or two. I've done this before, so it might. That's why I might be showing two. Now I want to get get holidays for the year. Now the country code I'm going to use, I can only pick one, so I'm going to pick US and the years, I only want 2018. You can also make them variables if you're getting it from somewhere else, like if you're pulling in from a website and you have a code running that you know uses the variables to get different you know years and dates and stuff, you click variable and then choose the variable based on that. Um, and then for the output, we're going to send it to a new connection. And this is the temp file. And I'll show you why in a little bit. But if you actually don't need to put it into a database and that's all you need, you don't need to call it temp. Um, in this tutorial, I don't like it having it just hang out as an XML file. And that plain XML file actually won't go into a SQL Server database as I'll show you. So I convert it to a working XML file. So that's why I put it into a temp first and then we're going to do a conversion. But so bear with me here. Sorry. But if you don't need to do that and you just need the raw XML file, um, then you don't need to call this file temp and this will be your last step. So anyway, this is done. Now I'm just going to hit start to test it. it says it's done. 
let's check our temp file that was blank before and here we go we got a whole bunch of information in here now let's go and you know for me this is not enough you know i my goal is to get this data and put it into a, a database so i'm gonna go ahead and grab a data flow task and say i want that file to come in here now in my data flow task i'm going to put xml source and i'm going to show you why i need to convert it so xml source let's cl click browse let's say we grab our temp file and we try to generate it as xsd because you have to generate it xsd either you have one or you need to generate one so let's generate one. Nope, won't work. This XML file contains multiple namespaces. Now the only way to get rid of that is to convert it. So you have to convert it first. So before we go any further, since we know that we're going to put it into a database, um, let's go ahead and open up our SQL Server. And also, Let's go ahead and open up this temp file to see what things we want from here. So it might look a little confusing if you've never seen XML, but pretty much it tells you right here, this is the country, United States, this is the holiday code you know, that they use. This is the, the descriptor, nearest day, and this is actually what I'm after. I want the descriptor and I need the date, which is right here. So those are, those, <coughs> excuse me, those are the two things that I'm gonna be going after. So in the database, I'm going to create a holiday name table uh, column and a date column. So let's go ahead and create a new database. Let's create table holiday names. We're going to have the holiday name. I'm just going to use 1255. And then we're going to have the holiday date. I'm just going to use this as a date time. I'll use this for now. So go ahead and execute. Done. Okay, we got our database set up. Now let's go ahead and go back to SSIS. And in here, we're going to add an XML task. And what this is going to do is this is going to convert our XML file that I can't use into an XML file that I can use. So, so from here, I'm going to first change this operation type to XLS, XSLT. Now, in the comments, I'm going to put the code, but here is the, let's create a new file real quick. And I'm going to call this one convert. Going to go ahead and edit with my notepad. Now, I already have it written right here. Um, I found this on Google. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this code into my, sorry, my new file. Convert.xslt. And so now we have that set up. Now source type is file connection. Source is our new, here's another new connection or it's gonna be our XSLT file, the conversion file, hit okay. Our op output is going to be another file connection. The destination is going to be our, the destination is gonna be our um, 
our final um, XML file, the holidays.xml. And then the second operation is also going to be a file connection. And this one is going to be the convert.xls file. And actually, I made a mistake here. This one is supposed to actually be the holidays temp file. So again, let's go over that real quick because I made a mistake. Um, in the input is the holidays temp file. This is the temporary file that is holding the unusable XML stuff. Um, the destination is the new one. And the second operation is the conversion. So go ahead and click OK. And we can go ahead and test it. I'll just, I can leave that. Okay. So if this works, then in our new XML file here, there should be a bunch of data. And there's not. So let's go see where we messed up. I think it's supposed to be true right here, actually. Let's try it again. Hmm. Okay, so what happened was that I forgot to put this overwrite destination to true. Saver operation is supposed to be true. Okay, sorry about that. I'm just trying to speed through this. And I should slow down. Okay, let's take a look again. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go back over that real quick because um, it might have got confusing. So again, we open our XML task. We have the XSLT operation type. We have the file connection for the source. We have our temp XML, which this um, web service brought in. We have our save operation result. Yes, it's true because you want to save it. You have, again, file connection. You have your new XML file that you're going to use to put the data into the SQL Server database. Overwrite destination is true because every time it runs, you just want to overwrite the, the file that's already there. Lastly, in the second operation type, you want, you want file connection again, and you want the conversion file, which is the code I'm going to post. That file will convert the unusable XML for the database to a usable XML for the database. Click OK. Now that we got that working, we're just going to put in a simple data flow task. And this is going to push our XML stuff to the database. So let's go ahead and grab our XML source. Uh, we're also going to need a data conversion and a OLEDB destination. OK, so let's grab our source here real quick. Now we have our holidays. You want to generate the XSD file. Save. Yeah, this error comes up, that's fine. Um, we don't need all of these. All we need are the description and the date. Okay, good to go. Data conversion. We just need to convert the description. I don't like it. Description. I'm going to call it description. And I've changed the data type to the string.dtsr. 255 is the length we made. Hit OK. Let's pick our new connection over here. Uh, I already have it to my test database. Let's go ahead and pick our holiday names. View existing data, nothing in there. Let's map the columns. Make sure to do this part because it automatically sometimes will do these. But I renamed them so it couldn't. So description to the holiday name and the date to the holiday date. Okay, looks good. Let's run it. Okay, it says 34 rows. Let's see if it got them. And there you go. Now you have all the holidays for the year. Now, if you don't want the extra time, you don't really need the time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and truncate. And then change the data type. I'll do it the easy way. Okay, let's go and run this again. But actually, we need to do a conversion now because this is not date anymore. It's just date. OK, 
Okay. Let's... There we go. That makes more sense. Now, if you wanted to take it one step further, you could um, move these around with the derived column and use an expression to just get the dates if you didn't want the year. Um, but that's basically how you use the web service task in SSIS.